Seth, how are you doing tonight? This half of the room needs some help. How are we doing tonight, guys? There you go. Thank you. This side apparently loves Jesus just a little bit more. So that's impossible. So, all right, guys. So, hey, before we start, two rules. What are they? First one is we don't have fun here. What's the first rule? Get out your phone. Let's go. Pictures. Take pictures. Post them because look left and right. What's, what's, what's next to you? If you don't have somebody sitting next to you, what's all this like open seats? Do you guys want free shirts in two weeks? Oh, okay. Okay. We're going to start calling people out. All right. Do you really want to go that far? Yeah, that's what I thought. Do you guys want any free shirts in two weeks? No? Yes? Apparently, none of you do. Daniel's the only one. So, hey, the only way you get a free shirt at Takeover Night is if you bring a first-time guest. That does not mean, Daniel, you can bring Landon because Landon's been here. Sorry. All right. What's your question real quick? Uh, then just grab somebody off the street. As long as you bring somebody. Bring a, if they need Jesus, that's all that matters. So, And then, hey, 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 Derek Dale's coming. I hope you guys are pumped. Derek's awesome. You may be like, I have no idea who Derek Dale is, but I promise you he's fantastic. Q&A's over because you were mean. Anyways... So, you can keep your hand up the whole time. Yes, what's your question? No, it is not my first time. No, it's not. No, I've never been a guest. I take that back. I haven't been a guest. I just haven't been a guest here. So, anyways, all right. So, let's go ahead. Pull out your notes. Get ready. I've got a lot of stuff for you guys tonight. So, if you weren't here last week, we started our brand new series called Weird. And so the whole point of the series is to really look at what it means to be weird and kind of talk about uh, what that entails as far as being a Christian. How sometimes when we follow God, when we have our walk, people are going to look at us. Society is going to view us as weird. And so last week when we started that out, we talked about how we really want to have a God type of weird. Uh, or that's how Jesus was. So that Jesus type of weird because Jesus was a weird guy. Okay. We talked about how Jesus talked in very weird phrases. We talked about how Jesus answered questions with questions. We talked about the miracles that he had. We talked about uh, the different things uh, in terms of, um, of how Jesus rose from the dead, which society or people would look at and be like, that's just weird because Jesus, you went in. I saw you hang on a cross. I saw you take your last breath. I saw you bleeding. I saw you die. And then three days later, you rose like you're getting ready to go into some type of like head and shoulders commercial. Like you rose out of the grave, clean, smelling good, ready to go like you just hit the barber shop. And so that's just a little bit awkward. So, but when we talk about all these things Jesus did, we talked about how society just did not view Jesus as normal. And what we looked at is that normal by society standards is acceptable. But weird actually changes lives. And so we talked about why it's so important to be weird. Now, when it comes to being weird, it's not for the faint of heart. It's not for somebody just to accept, somebody just to say, hey, I'll do that. I'll pick up the cross and just go with it. And that's all they do and just say, I want to be weird and walk. It's not for the faint of heart because being, being weird means that you willingly put yourself in uncomfortable situations. There are times that you are going to be in an uncomfortable situation because you choose to follow Christ, because you choose to be weird by society standards. So these uncomfortable situations, sometimes it means being viewed differently by, like, say, instance, your friends. Maybe you recently accepted Christ, and so you started following Christ, and you start telling your friends, hey, I... I'm not really into that anymore. I'm not going to do that. I'm not a part of that. Or maybe you tell, uh, maybe it's your family. You, maybe you come from a household that does not, uh, that does not uh, view God or does not worship God or does not have a relationship with God. So what that means is, is when you accept Christ, your family starts maybe view you differently. Like, why are you getting up on Sundays and going to church? Why are you going here on a Wednesday? Why are you reading your Bible? Why are you doing these things? And that's how your family sometimes views you. We even talked about, for instance, like your peers, your peers, the way that you're, they may view. You have people at school that you may not know. You may know who they are. You may know their name, but you don't know them on a personal level. And so these friends of yours or the people that you may claim are your friends or people that you just so happen know end up treating you differently. 
because you say, hey, I am a Christian. And they start looking at you that way. We even talked about how sometimes it can be people like your, uh, your coworkers. I told you last week how, how my coworkers sometimes view me. Guys, it happened to me yesterday. I went all the way out to Montgomery to do a training all day long. We had this big like introduction. Like everybody has anybody ever been to something where you have that weird time where it's like, hey, everybody tells somebody one thing that they don't know about you. And so it's just awkward and you go around the room and you gotta tell. Well, first thing I said was I said, Well, I'm actually a student pastor, and I told him about you guys. And so when we went all around the room, the guy re- running our training said, Okay, before we start, let's just bow our head uh, in a word of prayer. Who uh who would like to say the prayer for us? Guys, the entire room just stopped and turned and looked at me. And I, I was like, I knew this was going to happen. Like every time I, somebody finds out that I'm a pastor, immediately like, oh, well, you're the holiest one in the room. You should be the one praying. So why don't you do it? So that's what happens. That's how we are viewed. And I'll be honest with you. It was kind of an uncomfortable situation because I knew it was coming. But how many times, and be honest, how many times have you made a decision and gone through with it based on what someone else would either think or say about you? Like you, you gave whatever it was, you based your decision sl- solely off of that. Maybe it's not what you wanted. Maybe it's not what you wanted to do. But you said you did something, made a decision because you were trying to please somebody else, whether what they think about you or what they were going to say about you. You gave in and did it. This past weekend, I unfortunately, this was me. What's even worse about this is this weekend, I got to go to an Andy Mineo concert. Most of you guys, if you haven't heard of him, he's a huge Christian rapper. One of my favorite, I, I, I was so pumped. Like, I was so excited to go to this concert. I even told my wife, I said, babe, I got to pay the extra money because I want to do the meet and greet. I want to get to meet him. I want to spend some time with him. And the sad part came in before I left. I can't tell you how many times I changed my shirt just because I, I've never met the man in my life. I've only listened to his music, and I changed my shirt probably three or four times. I changed my shirt three or four times. I did don't, you know what? Don't hate on it. Y'all can hate all you want. Thank you. I'm glad. Either way, I changed my shirt three or four times. I put one on and I said, well, maybe, maybe if I have this shirt, I'll get recognized. And, you know, he'll we'll end up being friends and hanging out. And, you know, I'll get to go on tour with him. And from there, and then I changed my other shirt. And I said, well, I didn't like that. Maybe if I wear this one, you know, maybe he'll actually notice. So I'm sitting here basing off what I'm going to wear just because I'm making all these scenarios in my mind so I can meet him. What's worse is I text my wife. I said, yeah, I'm ready to go. I changed my shirt about three or four times. And she said, well, how did your message prep go before you left? I said, well, the sad part is my message is on pleasing others. And after I started working on my message, I changed my shirt all those times. So I'm kind of eating my own message while I did that. But the worst part is I was still so nervous when I took my picture, I took the worst picture in the world. I'm going to show you guys how bad this picture was. Like, I looked absolutely ridiculous in this picture. Like, mouth is like half wide open. The, it's not even in focus. I have a bag in my hand, and I'm just like, I don't even know where I'm pointing at. Like, I had no idea what to do. I was just, like, I was freaking out. I was freaking out when I got to meet him. Andy Minio, look him up. You'll love his music. It's good stuff. All right, so either way, that whole entire thing, that whole situation that I was basing off everything was because I was just trying to please somebody. But what I should have realized is that becoming obsessed with what other people think about us is the quickest way to forget what God thinks about us. Becoming obsessed with what other people think about us is the quickest way to forget what God thinks about us. Now, it's a natural instinct to want to to want to please others. It's a natural instinct uh, to do that. It's just part of who we are because honestly, we enjoy that like feel good feeling from others. Like we enjoy feeling good or, or pleasing others. We enjoy that feeling that comes from it. Maybe we have that I don't want to be hated feeling. Like you say, I don't want people to view me differently or I don't want people to hate me or I don't want people not to like me. So I live this way or do these things so they don't. Maybe it even goes as far as you're trying to impress some girl or guy. And so you act a completely different way just to please that person. And what's worse is that person that you're trying to please, they're not even liking who you are. You're liking the person that you think they like or the person that they think you are. And so you fall into that. And it goes to even further as saying, maybe you don't want to be that person that wants to be labeled as that goody, goody Christian person. Like you don't want to be that one in school that people are like, oh, well, goes that Christian kid. 
There goes the Christian that follows. There goes the person that follows Jesus. There goes this person. There goes the person that does that, that does this. And so you fall into that and because you don't want people to view you and think about you that way. But I would think it's actually fair to say that it's normal to be a people pleaser, but it's actually weird to make God your highest priority. Would you guys agree with that? The way the things you do, society, like it's, it's okay to be a people pleaser. That's what you should do. You got to make people happy. You got to make other people happy. But when you choose to follow God, society or other people view it as weird. Now, here's what I want you to do. Here's the truth about that statement. You can't please everybody. You're not going to please everybody. You're going to disappoint people. You're going to hurt people. You're going to make people feel bad. But one thing you can do is you can always please God. You may not be able to please other people all the time, but you can always please God. Now, the Apostle Paul understood what this meant. He understood what it meant to please God and just not to focus on pleasing other people. If you guys want to, go ahead and turn with me to Galatians, Galatians chapter 1. We're going to start in verse 10. Now, a little backstory. What's going on right now is that Paul is ministering to the church of Galatia. And the people in this church have no idea how to make God happy. And they're asking Paul all these questions. So do we do this? Do we do that? Like, well, if we do this for God, is he going to be happy with us with this? If we do this for God, is he going to be mad at us? So they're asking Paul all these questions. And frankly, he just gets tired of it. And he just says, look, I'm just going to lay it down right here. And here's what he says to him. Do you think that I am the one trying to make people accept me? No. God is the one I'm trying to please. I'm trying, am I trying to please people? If I still wanted to please people, I would not be a servant of Christ. So normal to please people all the time. But when we do that, we can't be Christ's servant. We can't follow God when we're spending all of our time trying to please people. And what we need to do is break out of that normalcy or break out of things that society says we shouldn't do and be weird. Be that person that doesn't worry about pleasing people. Be that person that chases after God. Now, if you're sitting here, you may think to yourself, am I a people pleaser? Do I do this? Do I try to please others? I want to give you guys four different things that if you're even one of these, you're a people pleaser and you try to please people. So the first one that I have for you is that you take criticism personally. You take criticism personally. Now, what that means is, is that means when someone tries to critique you and they may be doing it for the better, you take it personally. Like you may have a friend of yours that's just trying to help you out, that's just trying to tell you how you're doing something and how you should be acting. And you just you get all defensive about it. And it makes you mad when they call you out on it. And so you take it personally because you don't like the fact that that person had something bad to say. You don't like the fact that that person was trying to correct you. So you, again, are trying to please people. The second one is that you, have an, uh, that you have a fear of rejection. You have an extraordinary fear of rejection. So you don't like when somebody doesn't like you. You don't like when somebody looks down on you. You don't like when someone rejects you. So in turn, you base all of your decisions off what that person says. And not just that person, it could be a person, it could be a family member, it could be a group, but everything that you do, you base off that because you are scared to death of being rejected. And you're scared to death of what people are gonna think of you, so you just give in, doesn't matter what it goes against, doesn't matter if you completely disagree with it, you do it because you're scared to be rejected. The next one is that you find it hard to express your true feelings. You find it hard to express your true feelings. Now, what this is, is the fact that you're never really honest with who you are. If somebody tries to call you out or somebody tries to say something or somebody tries to say, hey, do you want to go here? Hey, do you want to do this? And in your heart, you're like, ah, that's just not really for me. That's not what I want to do. I don't like that. I don't, I don't, I'm not really, that's not what I want to do. But instead, you know, the moment that you say no, you're going to start being made fun of, or you're going to have them give you a hard time, or they're going to be picking at you. So you don't really ever share with them like, hey, you know, I don't, you know, if you want to do it, that's fine. I, I don't agree with it. And here's why. I just, I don't. And you don't have to be mean about it. You don't have to be rude. You can just tell them that's not for me. The last one is that you have a hard time saying no. You have a hard time saying no, because you want to please others. Like take, for example, say you have somebody at your school that you really don't like. 
Okay, you've never, they've never given you any reason to like them. Like, and they come up to you and say, hey, can I get a ride down the street? And you're like, yeah, sure, I'll do it. But in your heart, you're like, I, like, we don't get along at all. Like, all you've ever done is like, pick at me, and you've just been moved. But, so you do it, and you're like, yeah, sure, I'll give you a ride. But the entire time, like, you're bitter about it. Like, you're under your breath, like, oh, my God, I can't believe I'm giving this person a ride. Like, they annoy me. Like, I can't even, I can't even stand the way they smell. Like, I can't even stand to be around them. Like, they just get under my skin. But, yeah, you're like, hey, did you enjoy the ride? I'm so glad I got to give you a ride somewhere. And so that's all you're doing. You're just being kind the entire time. And so because, again, you don't want to make that person mad, which is what's really bad is the fact that you don't even like that person, but yet you base your decisions off what they think. And so you have a hard time saying no. See, God calls us to be like Christ. And what that means is we need to spend less time worrying about what other people think. We need to spend less time worrying about what other people think. Now, don't get it twisted. God calls us to make disciples of all nations. God calls us to to be there for others and to bring others to Christ. But God doesn't call us to make decisions just to compromise our values. Like, God's not going to tell you in your heart, like, oh, well, I need to bring my girlfriend to Christ, so I guess we need to sleep together. And that's, you know, I can teach her about Christ. That's not what, God's not trying to have you compromise your values, so that way you can try to, be, you can try to bring someone to Christ. Christ wouldn't do that. See, Christ doesn't want us to be part of this world. He wants us to be set apart from this world. He doesn't call us to be like this world. For me, I had a hard time with this. When I got to Huntington in college in Montgomery, it's where I went to play football. I didn't know anybody. Only people I knew were the guys I played football with. I wasn't really, uh, as I got there, I had spent all the time in high school, through college, going to church, having a relationship with God. And as soon as I got to Huntington, I had nothing. I had nowhere that I really had a church I could call home. I had nobody that I wanted to spend time around. The only time, only people that I spent time with was the football guys. And about 95% of the football guys were into nothing but drinking, smoking, having sex, going out, doing, that's all they did. But if you weren't a part of that, they gave you the hardest time. And they gave you the hardest time in practice. They would take shots at you. They would take you out at the knees. They would hit you in the back, like all this kind of stuff because you weren't a part of their group and they didn't really care. It doesn't matter if you're on the same team or not. So the only way that I ever felt like I could get in that was to do what they did. So I ended up spending all of my Saturdays all of my Saturday nights doing nothing but drinking, going out. I had times where I had no idea how I got home, all this stuff. And the only reason I did all this stuff, and it was the first time I'd ever had a drink in my life, was because I was trying to fit in with the guys from the football team. I had nothing, I had none of that stuff that I wanted to be a part of. I just was trying to find a way and have somewhere that I could just fit in with where they are. And so you got to think, how many of you have a friend that if you were doing something like that, something completely against what you know is against your values and who you are, how many of you have a friend that would just straight up call you out? Like they tell you like, hey, bro, sister, girlfriend, like you need to fix it. Like this ain't working. Like this is what you're doing. You know, you, have, you take no personal criticism. Like you say, hey, call me out if that's not me. If we were living in the times that Jesus was alive, he'd have no problem doing it. And what's even funnier is that Jesus had no problem calling you out in front of everybody. Jesus would let you know when you weren't living the way that you should. So let's look. In John chapter 12, Jesus is doing this right here. Jesus is calling people out and telling them how they are acting and telling them how they should be. And it's going to be in verse 42. And here's what he says. He says, yet at the same time, many even among the leaders believed in him. But because of the Pharisees, they would not openly acknowledge their faith for fear they would be put out of the synagogue for they loved human praise more than praise from God. So Jesus is saying like, hey, look, like you are so scared of what they're going to do, of what the Pharisees are going to do to you, that you enjoy their praise more than you enjoy my own. And so you want to listen to what they have to say for you. And Jesus is saying like, if you want to be bold for Jesus, you got to give in and get away from the what will other people think about me? How will other people view who I am? Like, let's just be honest for a moment. I'm going to call you out. I'm not going to say any names, but I guarantee you there are people right now sitting in this room that are not living out the plan that God has for you because you enjoy the praises of of people more than you enjoy the praises of God. 
You can think right now, I bet you even today there are people in this room that don't listen to anything God says because you enjoy how much praise you get from other people instead of the praise that you would get from God. And here's what's even worse about that. I don't even think that people pleasing is actually a people problem. I think people pleasing pleasing is actually more of a spiritual problem. Like I would even go as far to say that people pleasing is actually a form of idolatry. Because you have to think, what is idolatry? It's anything we put before God, anything that we put our praise and our worship into. And so if our lives, if our decisions, if everything we do is based off what other people think of us, it's technically a form of idolatry. Because we're idolizing what other people think before me. Why? Because that means that we worship the praise of other people before we worship the praise of our own God. We put what other people think of us ahead of everything else in our life, all of our decisions, what we say, what we do, how we act, every single bit of that is based off what other people think instead of looking to, the, looking to God's word and seeing what he tells us to do. So we put all of our praise and our worship in people instead of putting our praise and worship into God. You guys have heard before, Proverbs is probably one of my favorite books in the Bible. And I want to pull a verse that I want to show you guys. It's going to be chapter 29, verse 25. Here's what it says. Fear of man will prove to be a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord is kept safe. So fear of man, what does that mean? How, how is there a fear of man? There's a fear of man because when we base what we do off other people, it's because we fear that they have the ability to hurt us. They have the ability to say things, to do things, to make us feel this way, and they're going to bring me down. They're going to make me feel miserable. We fear, we fear people because we allow them to have control over us. When you make those decisions based on what other people think, guys, they're controlling you. They're making the decisions for you. You're giving in to everything they say, and you're allowing them to control what you do. We fear people because sometimes we think that they determine our future. If I do this, if I say this, if I turn this down, then I'm never going to be accepted. Then I'm never going to be invited here. I'm never going to be able to go there. People are going to view me this way. And even more than that, we fear what they think. We fear what they think about us. And so I challenge you guys to say, what does it matter? What does it matter what anybody else thinks? Why would you ever let anybody else in your life have control over you, fear that they can hurt you, fear that they're determining your future. Nobody determines your future but you. And why would you ever care what anybody else thinks? And so when you guys look back at that verse, you see that in the scripture, it, it references a, 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 the snare. Now that snare is not like a drum, okay? That snare that you see, the, uh, the Hebrew word from that is actually translated into mokesh. Like snare in Hebrew is translated into mokesh. Now mokesh means to be hooked by the nose, okay, or to kind of be trapped. So literally, I'm going to give you guys like a, uh, I'm going to give you a visual communication. When you are, when you have that mokesh, when you have that snare, you are literally finger in the nose and you're hooked, like straight up. Like, I don't care. Y'all can judge me all you want. My fingers in my, this is what you're doing. This is what your friends are doing. They are literally pulling you around by your nose. I really can't believe I've got my finger in my nose. So... But, no, no, that's my child. But the fear of people, when they have us hooked by the nose, when they're pulling us around, we're actually, that's like we're being trapped because that's what a snare is. It's a trap. And so our people, our friends are, are pulling us around and they're pulling us left and they're pulling us right and they're pulling us where they think that we should go. And being caught in a trap often leads to compromising. What that compromising leads to is things like, uh, when you compromise those things, you look at compromising like your sexual values. Maybe you say to a, a boyfriend or a girlfriend that says, look, I, I only think that you and I will really be an item if we sleep together. Like, I think I'll love you more once that happens. And so because you want to please them, because you're listening to what somebody else is saying, the lies that they give you, you give into your own values. You know in your heart that's not right. That's not what I want to do. That's not where I want to go. But you do it. Because you're trapped. They're pulling you by the nose. You're giving in to what they're saying. You could even go as far as things like just the words you use. You allow what your friends say. Well, if I talk like this, I'll be more accepted. If I use these words, if I 
say these things or if I call this person this word or whatever, you feel like people are going to accept you more. And so you're kind of caught. Again, they got you caught by the nose and you're caught in this trap. It could even be something like your integrity over money. Maybe you're in charge of money. Maybe at the job you have, you know that you know in yourself, like, man, when I walk back to the back, there's no cameras and I can take as much money as I need and I need it. Like, I really need to get these new pair of shoes or these new clothes so I can be accepted. And you start giving in to what other people think. You're like, I need, I need fast money. I need it now. And so you're in charge of all this stuff, and you end up just taking it, putting it in your pocket, keeping it a little bit. And you're like, nobody will notice. Nobody's going to get hurt. It's just a little bit of money, just a little bit of that. Maybe it even is things like laughing at jokes that you know you shouldn't be laughing at. There's things that you don't value whatsoever. People are making jokes that you're like, I don't agree with that. I don't like that. I don't think it's appropriate. It doesn't make me feel good inside when I make those jokes. But yet you still do it and you still laugh at it because you know if I'm the one sitting in the room not laughing, like I'm going to be the one being made fun of. I'm going to be the one that everybody is joking about. But fearing man, it means that you're becoming worldly. And it means that you're giving in to what the world says. And what God calls us to do is be a leader. Be a leader for others. Now, being a leader doesn't mean you have to be at the front, doesn't mean you have to be the one with the microphone, doesn't mean you have to be the one in charge. Guys, there's all types of leaders. You may be sitting here right now and say, God, Adam, that's not me. I'm not a leader. I'm a follower. Like, nobody ever listens to me. Like, I don't like my own voice, so I can't lead. I can't do these things. That's not for me. I don't want to do that. I don't want to lead. But see, guys, leadership has all different forms of leadership. You can lead by example. You can be the quiet one in the room. You can be the one that you know, doesn't give in, doesn't do this, doesn't do that, or when somebody asks them to make a certain decision, they go the opposite direction. You can lead by example. You can just lead others by being somebody that can talk when they need it. A friend, somebody that's there. That's leadership. That's leading. That's not being part of this world. So they come in all different shapes and sizes. Now, the hard part about being a leader is that sometimes you're going to have to make the hard choice. And when you make that hard choice is you're going to end up having to change what other people think about you. When you make that hard choice, people are going to change how they, look, how they think about you. Now, being a people pleaser, how do we escape it? How do we move from being a people pleaser? The simple thing is this. You need to fear God. You need to fear God. Now, that phrase, fearing God, that doesn't mean that you're physically scared of him. That doesn't mean that you need to be scared of who God is. Fearing God means you fear how God thinks and how God would react to the things you do. For instance, how many, how many of you guys have had that parent that you've done something wrong, you hadn't gotten grounded, you hadn't had anything wrong, and you're like, oh, I'm going to get off scot-free. And then right before you walk back to your room, your mom and dad goes, I just want you to know how disappointed I am in the decisions you made. If you sit here and tell me that does not bother you, you are lying. That is straight through the heart. You're like, why could you not have just grounded me for a week? Like that, like that. I mean, they know, and it's that last instant, like they're getting in the last word. I just want you to know how bad you disappointed me. That, that's what fear of God is. That's that fear of, I don't want to be the person that, that disappoints God. I don't want to be the person that goes against what God says. See, the fear of God, that's the antidote to the fear of people. That's how we fight that. That's how we change that. I want to be real with you guys just one more time. And this may be you, and this is just something for you guys just to think about and meditate this week. If people are too big in your life, then your God is way too small. If the opinions of other people are the biggest problem in your life, your God is too small. Because God can overcome all those things. And the way we combat that is by spending time with God. See, the more time that you spend with God, the less you worry about other people's opinions. The more time you spend with God, the less you worry about what other people think about you, the less you worry about what other people think about you. Now, the flip side of that is, the more time you spend with God, the weirder you become. That's the whole point of what we're trying to call out. The whole point of what we're trying to say is that being weird is where you want to be at. Having that relationship with God and being viewed that way is exactly where you want to be at. See, giving in to the opinions of others 
all that does is suck us into a normal lifestyle. And we said it last week. Normal doesn't work. Normal is overworking. Normal is being too busy. Normal is giving in to to your boyfriend or girlfriend for when they're trying to get you to sleep with them. Normal is going out and drinking till you can't remember where you are anymore. Normal is just giving in to everything that your friends want us to do that you know deep down inside of your heart, that's not right. That's not me. That's not the person that I was meant to be. Because when you spend time with God, it allows you to understand who you are. When you spend time with God, it allows you to understand more of the gifts that he gave you and how you were supposed to use them. And so that way, when God sends you to do something that's just completely off the wall that you know in your heart, I would never in a million years do this if I did not have a relationship with God, you have no problem whatsoever doing it. And instead of the opinions of others, you worry about the opinion of God. You worry about you want to make God proud. And you worry about the fact that I don't want to let God down. Psalms 34, 9 says, The fear, fear the Lord, you his godly people, for those who fear him will have all that they need. See, when you fear God, you understand that you have every single thing that you need. The opinions of other people don't matter. Because when your your look of God, when how you view God gets bigger, when your relationship with God gets bigger, the opinions of people get smaller and the weirder that you become. So this week, when you go on, when you are faced with that moment that you're being picked at or you have a friend that's trying to have you make a decision that you know in the bottom of your heart, I really shouldn't be a part of that. I shouldn't be doing that. I shouldn't give in to it. Think for a moment where you are. Think to yourself, should I really be afraid of this person? Should I be afraid of what they can do? Should I be afraid of their opinion? And use that to not be afraid of others and not spend our lives trying to please other people instead of spending our lives trying to please God. I want you guys to bow your heads with me today. With all heads bowed and all eyes closed, I want you guys real quick, think back to that question. If the opinions of others is the biggest problem in your life, then your God is too small. I want you guys just take a quick moment I want you just to think back to your own life. Where in your life are you allowing the opinions of others to oversee who God is? Where are you allowing the opinions of others to shrink how big God really is? And I want you to think, are you that person that I mentioned that's sitting in here right now that is walking past every single gift that God has given you because you enjoy the praises of people more than you do the praise of our great and mighty God. I want to challenge you guys tonight to make a decision to follow Christ. Chase after him. Have that relationship with God. Find a God who's so big that we don't ever have to worry about what anybody else thinks about us. Because honestly, their opinion doesn't matter. The only opinion that we want to follow and the only opinion that we want to make good is God's opinion. If you want to, if you're ready for that, if you're ready to make that decision, tonight's the perfect night for it. If you're ready for a relationship with God, I've told you before, there's no special words. There's no class you got to take. There's no special phrase you got to say. Guys, God is a God that wants to be our friend. God is a God that wants nothing more than for us just to spend our days having a conversation with him. That's all it takes. Just having a conversation with God, telling him, I've 
My heart is here. I'm open to you. And I'm ready for that relationship with you, God. If you're ready to take that step, I challenge you today to raise your hand and say, I'll do it. I will have that big God. I see that hand. That's awesome. I see your hand. Maybe you're not ready to, to raise that hand. Maybe you still have a few questions. That connect card that Daniel talked about, if you've made a choice, you have questions about that, write that on that card. Use that to chase after God and find out who he is. God, we lift up these students today. And God, students today, they, they're in a place where it's so hard at times not to give in to what other people say. But God, I ask that when they're faced with that situation, when they're faced with those friends, when they're faced with their peers, with their coworkers, or with their families that question their faith, that question who they are, God, I ask that you just remain there and let them know that you're there through it all with them. God, in your holy name we pray. Amen.